together this event. And thank you, uh, Arthur, for the invitation. Um, after 33 years in law enforcement, this is something I'm very passionate about. Every time I hear or see on the news an incident that occurred, like Ferguson, after New York, uh, Trayvon Martin situation, or any, any situation where it involves police and law enforcement, I just, at least uh, in, in the community, I always go back when I first started in law enforcement, uh, again, for 33 years, and I believe that police have a mission and an assignment, and they really are generally, most agencies have within their mission statement, their duty is to protect the public. Police officers are part of the community, they're part of the solution, the thing called the thin blue line. What happens is you have, in the middle of that blue line is, is, is police, and on the top is, is the community, and on the bottom are those offenders, the criminals. And the only thing that stands between, between good and evil is that end of the line, that's law enforcement. So when I hear situations about um, how the police misconduct, I mean, obviously that can happen in any, any walk of life. But on the way over here, uh, just for today, I saw a statistic that I heard before that was very staggering that 80% all crimes are committed by 20% of repeat offenders. So for the most part, they have a lot of good people, they have a good law enforcement officers. But the thing that came out of Ferguson, and, and I'll touch upon this maybe later on, some of the questions, it's a whole use of force issue. Um, law enforcement agencies are governed by, uh, for the most part, a Supreme Court case that happened back in 1989 called uh, Grand Connor. That, that established a sense of uh, objective reasonableness on the part of law enforcement officers. Was it officers' actions? Was it objection? Was it objective? And was it reasonable? Reasonable, reasonable the standard is if, as a black law enforcement officer, the suspect was white, would I be in the same situation? Would I respond the same way? Would a reasonable officer, anybody, respond in the same way? So objective reasonableness standard it's a high standard um, to, to maintain. And so law enforcement officers are not just out as much renegade cops and doing things they shouldn't be doing. But the community also has a part to play. Uh, I know in my career, uh, if I'm making an arrest or a search warrant, and you give lawful commands to an individual, you expect that individual to come up. Um, and so a lot of situations that have occurred uh, over the last couple of years, and uh, I'm sure this discussion tonight will hopefully we can talk about a lot of that. Um, and part of my mission in ATF, uh, I was a fire instructor, and we all would emphasize the use of force uh, when it was appropriate. Uh, in, in the opinion of the officer, if there's imminent danger of a bodily injury or serious or, or death, imminent does not mean uh, it has to happen right now. Imminent means as you was looking at a situation and as the certain circumstances are unfolding, uh, the person making some gestures, or for weapon, those are justifiable uses of a weapon. So hopefully we can uh, engage in some dialogue tonight, uh, Arthur, and hopefully um, from, the, from the questions or anything else. But I really, I'm, I'm passionate about this whole issue uh, because uh, it's, it's serious, I think it needs to be addressed. I think opportunities like this come before the public and speak and engage in dialogue that's, that's useful. I think uh, we're probably going to come out of it. So uh, if you want to just start with the question. Sure, absolutely. Okay, let's give our panelists a little bit